Here's an 8 transistor Arvin battery operated portable AM radio from around 1962. It's a model 61R58 and I picked this up at the flea market yesterday and it actually had a actually still works even had batteries in it. I've been seeing this radio for the past couple of months I just didn't want to pay the didn't really want to pay the twenty dollars that they were asking for it. I figured, well, if it sits long enough, some they'll lower the price on it. Well, as it turns out, the vendor who owned this radio is the type that left instructions more or less saying that you know my prices are marked, they're non-negotiable, and don't waste my my time or yours calling me to ask me if I'll take less because I'm not going to. So since it worked and since it had batteries with it, I just went ahead and got it. I've actually had several of these over the years, but every one of them were very, very, very beat up and usually missing knobs or other parts. This one's not exactly in perfect shape either, but I think it'll clean up okay. And we'll turn it on and see what we can get. This has positions for music and voice. Was back when this radio was made, there was still a good bit of music on AM, but not that way anymore. I think that's a low powered country station from. Jesus, I love calling your name. Now, the best music ever made is pure gospel from yesterday and today on 24-Hour Christian Radio, 1390 AM, WMER. I don't know what's up with this station. It's very distorted. It's not the radio. It's that way on every radio. I am weak, but I'll watch. Yeah, there's Rush coming from somewhere, a distant station. That's the local R&B station, which, which they play a lot of older stuff that I like, but they also play a lot of later stuff that I can do without. has pressed the message that if policymakers can agree on a strategy what people think and they, as uh, like I was telling you screener as outrageous as it sounds turn this light off Five miles away. It used to be a decent station, but it's gone the way of the black gospel craze like so many other AM stations have. Her fiance, two young cuts in education. As far as AM goes, this one's about the only thing around that's worth listening to. And I can tell that this radio is going to need some new electrolytic capacitors and the alignment needs to be touched up, but it does play, as you can hear. Okay. Now we'll open the back and see what the inside looks like. And here's the tag on the radio where they were had it for sale at the flea market, twenty dollars. And really, I don't much care for these sellers that won't negotiate on prices. Uh, 
I sell a lot of stuff too and if I wasn't willing to negotiate my prices then I wouldn't sell very much stuff but so many flea market sellers they put a price on something and they don't care if it sits there for 10 years if they can't get their price they won't let it go but anyway enough of that so let's open this up and see what the inside looks like and here's the chassis looks like a a nice sized well laid out chassis that shouldn't be too difficult to work on has a nice sized ferrite bar antenna and there's the model tag and the battery box is right here I haven't even pulled the batteries out to see what's in it so just for the heck of it we'll do that and see if this radio has more recent batteries or older batteries still in it this radio uses four C-cell batteries. These look like recent batteries, Sunbeam brand, probably made in China. Let's, well, it actually doesn't say where these were made, but I'm sure they were made in China. And looking at this battery box, I can tell that at some point some batteries have leaked in here, but obviously it wasn't bad enough to prevent the connections from making contact. And looking at the, at the schematic, this is indeed an 8-transistor radio. Back then, a lot of radios claimed to use 8, 10, as many as 16 transistors, but some of the transistors were actually either wired as diodes or even, uh, or even installed in positions that would have nothing to do with the circuit function whatsoever. And then I think the Federal Trade Commission got in an uproar about that, which they should have, and made it mandatory where the manufacturers couldn't do that. But anyway, take a quick look at the schematic. We have an RF amp stage, a converter stage, first IF stage, second IF stage, our detector diode, our first audio amp, our audio driver, and finally our push-pull audio output stage. So with a stage of RF amplification in two IF stages, this radio should be should be a fairly good performer once everything's aligned and serviced. And there's our battery pack configuration. But there you go. Well, I guess our station decided to introduce some dead air into the program. But there you go, my 1962 Arvin 8-transistor radio. Thanks for watching, and more to come later.